All right, guys, I am back, and this is kind of an update, kind of a view, meow, meow, to you too, Mr. Peta. Kind of an update, kind of a viewer request. We are going to be looking at um, kind of my current day, going back to work in the shop. What is my EDC, my pocket dump? What do I have every day for working at, at the shop that I work at? And um, now, with the caveat, that I may choose from day to day to add something, um, you know, now and then for fun or, or, you know, I might need something specific, but this is what is going to be what I, when I, when I step out the door and I am at work, this is what I'm carrying at all times. And I'll walk you through everything and why, and why it is. Um, with one more caveat that I don't always have these both with me. I'm usually rotating one or the other. So we'll get through that. And then, you know, I'd love in the comments for you guys to tell me what you think of my choices or, or what you guys have because you need them professionally or just your choice that this is what you have. And when, when we say EDC in this case, you know, we talked about what does EDC really mean before, um, <clears throat> you know, the two ways you could define everyday carry. In this case, I literally mean every day, this is what I'm carrying. You know, not just, oh, it's meant for, you know, just everyday use. So let's get started. We'll start with the knives. So I had mentioned this um, in the last live stream that I'm kind of looking, you know, since I'm on my feet walking around in the shop every day and there is going to be other stuff in my pockets um, for my knife that I'm going to be carrying for just utility work. Um, it's it's down to I've, I've decided I've narrowed it down between the Manix 2, Spyderco Manix 2 in Maximet and the Zero Tolerance 0357, which is a 20 CV blade. Now, the qualities that these two both have is that they are small EDC sized. Um, you know, they're not big, huge uh, knives. They're both relatively slim for good pocket, you know, sizing, um, lightweight, and they have great edge retention. Both of these steels um, great edge retention. The 20 CV, I think, is a little bit better on, on the corrosion resistance than the Maximet, but in either case, you know, I, I don't I don't mind giving them a wipe down and taking care of them, whether it's throughout the day or, you know, every now and then or whatever. Um, but they're both, if you, if you look, not full blade shape, but the cutting edges are both very similar shape too. So, you know, when I swap them out, it's not like I have to get used to a different functionality in terms of cutting or anything. They both have very, very similar size and shape to the cutting surfaces. So what kinds of stuff do we cut in the shop? It could be anything <clears throat> from cardboard to um, 3M uh, abrasive pads uh, to um, filter materials for, for the spray booth and for the hydrographics um, tank. It could be, um, you know, shaving down the ends of PVC pipe. It, there's Pete again. It could be um, rubber tubing. It could be cut, cutting through silicone molds. Um, it could be, I mean, there there is a, I could go on and on about all the things that we might end up cutting and then stuff that we never expected to cut through too. You know, like, I mean, that's why I, I think Maximet or 20CV are both great blades for dealing with, I'm not talking hard use, but I'm talking about heavy duty cutting um, and, and hold that edge retention throughout. Now, both of these, the, the one drawback I would point out, and I pointed this out before, is that that extremely fine point, and you know, when we talk about hardness versus toughness and all that stuff, if I were to, the, the, it's concrete floor on the whole place. So if I were to drop one of these and they landed tip first, I'm definitely gonna lose a tip on either one of these. But, you know, that would be more my fault than the blade's fault, you know what I mean? So. Um, <clears throat> this is a significantly older knife to me in my hands than, than this one is. Um, but like I have just for the first time in what, three, four years had to sharpen this one again. Um, so I really like the steel types. I like the designs. They're both comfortable in hand. Um, and this one's special to me because I, I've said this before, but it's the first thing I ever put in a hydrographics tank and dipped. So it kind of is fitting that I carried around, but I like both of these. So I, I'll rotate them. I'll rotate them in and out, you know, as I go, um, EDC wise, um, next I might as well do this. So this is a leather notebook cover. Very, I mean, it's excellent quality leather. You can see this has, this has quite a lot of life on it. 
Mmm, it smells delicious. Um, uh, there's always notes to be taken. Whether it's learning a technique, whether it's getting notes on what a customer wants, whether it's uh, notes on a project of what needs to be done or whatever. This is by Papa of Leather. Um, they make amazing handmade leather leather goods. You remember my old EDC wallet, my little front pocket wallet. Uh, the older one was by Popov, and I, I love it. Now this one is sized perfectly for holding little field notes, notebooks. Um, these are not, they have some that are that are kind of tougher and more rugged, but you know, this is just great for holding it. It can hold a couple cards in there if you want. Um, and it's it's classy too. You know, it's classy when you're working with a customer and they're talking about what a pro what project they want, and you know, you, you take this out and it, it it looks it looks nice. You know, and it's got a lot of character to it at this point. It's also a few years old. I really enjoy it. It is a little bit bulky in a pocket, but I just I really like it, and it smells like really good leather. Um, and these two elastic straps, you slide the pen up through them and, and kind of weave them together, and it keeps it nice and closed. For a pen, now I'm not rocking some big tactical pen or whatever in the shop because I just, I don't need to. So what I'm using, this is actually a brand new one because my old one got run over by a forklift. <laughs> this is a brand new one. This is actually a military issue item. This is a B3 aviator pen. It's made by Skillcraft, which is, is a long time manufacturer of all sorts of military stuff. Um, but this is, this has been issued to, to air crew and military people forever. I like it because you twist it, you get black ink, you twist it, you get red ink, you twist it, you get a, a 0 0.5 millimeter lead automatic pencil. And then in here, you've got an eraser. Um, it's about 20 bucks, 20, between 20 and $25. Uh, you can refill the black ink with a Fisher um, uh, pressurized space pen refill if you want. So you can like write upside down on grease and stuff. I, I don't have that, I just have regular, but it's. It's a very reliable writing instrument. Um, it's anodized aluminum body. Um, and so you can, I mean, you could, if you if you were so inclined, use it on some pressure points. Um, but if you're holding it by the back, you, it, it has a, you know, because that's how you do the lead, you know, you press down on it. But it's a very, like I said, it's very good, reliable um, writing instrument unless you run over it with a forklift by accident. Um, and it kind of, you know, being this kind of matte black finish, it looks kind of sleek and everything. And it goes nicely with the look on the notebook. So that just kind of scrunches in here. And this, since this is brand new, the clip is pretty tight. So this stays with me and then I can just swap out the, uh, the little field notes books um, or even just put some paper in there, some right in the rain paper, whatever I want. And this is, this is with me all the time for whatever notes I got to take. So because I mentioned the pop-off wallet, um, you guys have seen this, the review recently, the Code 118. This is the laminated carbon fiber tech wallet. They call it a tactical wallet. I think it's more of a technical EDC wallet, but it's got the pop-up feature for all the cards. Um, I love this, it's slim. It's not as slim and small as the pop-off wallet was, but it's RFID blocking. It's very convenient, has the clip, so it's right there at the lip of my pocket whenever I wanna pull it out, and it holds a lot more than the pop-off wallet ever did. Um, so I've been, I've been, I really like this since I got it. The organization factor with the pop-up cards just makes it so easy to just go through and find what you're looking for and put the rest away. Um, I have an affiliate link for this if anybody's interested. I'll drop it in the video description here. Um, it's 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 among one of my favorite new little toys to play with too. It's very fidgety, but no, it's great. It's a great wallet. Tactical, I don't know. They like I said, they call it a tactical wallet. I call it more of an you know an EDC front pocket wallet, but it's it's pretty good and it's with me every single day. And there's still more room in here, even though you see all the stuff in here. There's still more room. You know, if I wanted to jam more stuff in this. Um, a new addition is, um, this is by, by Kenku. Um, now you can get these, there, there are all sorts of these little pocket pry bars these days. Now, why do I carry this? This is weird, I know, some people might be thinking. Um, knife can do a lot of things for you, but if you're using your knife to pry things open, you are wrong. And if you haven't broken your knife doing it yet, you're lucky and it's gonna happen. 
Um, we have a lot of sealed containers in the shop, um, a lot of stuck things. I, I can't I can't even tell you. But you know, best example is like quart jars of of different coatings and paints that we need to get into and everything. And so this is just great for that. It's in my pocket. It lets me do that real easy. You can see here it's got. No, it, and this is not a fancy one at all. I got this because it was not expensive. Now they say it's titanium. Eh, I feel like it's more aluminum, but it was, like I said, it was like 20 bucks. So, you know, I'm not crying either way. I could do a little grinding on it to find out if it's really titanium, but I'm not that invested in it. You know what I mean? Um, but it's got a little blade there for cord cutting. It will hold your favorite uh, quarter inch bit. And then it's got a quarter inch bit socket. So, you know, I could use it in that capacity. If I really needed to uh, bottle opening areas and then little various wrench bits all throughout and yeah they say you could use this as like a box opener but got those for that but no it's, it's just nice to have a little pry bar in your pocket for doing that sort of stuff so you, you know you're never going to mess up your your knife and like chip parts of it and everything for that um, and this uh, is also relatively new I've used it a couple times but it's been great to have and it's just very slim, very lightweight, whether it's aluminum or titanium. You know, they say it's titanium. Like I said, they say it's titanium. What I could do is put it in the blast cabinet and blast this finish off and then take a torch to it because aluminum and titanium both heat oxidize just a little bit different. And I would be able to know the difference based on that. You know what I've never done, though? I've never done this. I've never done this with the blade. So let's... Not bad. Not bad, a little more effort than I'd like, but not bad. Um, and this is the bit that came with it. I've just never changed it out to anything because I've never really needed to so far, but it's good to have, it's good to have. I, I'm sure I'd get by without it. I could stop what I'm doing and go and find like a screwdriver or something like that in the shop. But this just, again, lets me keep working without having to go get something else. And it really doesn't take up much space at all. And I probably will, regardless, probably, unscrew that and take that off and, and blast it and then just take a blowtorch to it and and do the the anno heat ox heat oxidation on it myself because i can and i like doing that so that's cool along with that this is a well so called again they say titanium um might be aluminum uh tweezers and i got them in a package of three for like twelve dollars Odd thing, I know, to carry around. But, so, what you need to understand is that when we're doing a lot of work with, like, stenciling and stuff like that on customization projects, we have to do what we call weeding, which is, if you've ever bought a package of stickers, you know how, like, when, when, you, when you take the stickers off, there's all that stuff that's on the outside? So when we have vinyl stencils and stuff for camouflage patterns or picture designs or whatever, we have to get in there and take out all the stuff, you know, and weed the stencil and... and take out all the little extraneous bits or just take stuff off and put it so you know having you could do it with with a knife blade but then you risk cutting stuff up and it's then you still got to get it positioned nicely so believe it or not having a good pair of tweezers actually pays off really well in the shop and i saw this and i said hey that's that's great and i've already tested it these things are are very clampy they actually are are good tweezers like so if i also had a splinter or something in the shop or we were messing with, you know, test firing something outside, got a tick. This would be, I mean, this this is a good, it's a good set of tweezers. It's a very good set of tweezers. Um, very accurate and grabby. <clears throat> um, so the set comes with one blue, one bronze, and then a smaller, just bare metal one. Uh, just with the bead blast finish. Um, so whether they're aluminum, whether they are um, titanium, again, very lightweight. Um, and they let me do a lot of that fine work and again the, again the whole point is i have it on me instead of having to go uh to the back shop you know into the office and and get it i can just continue working it saves me time makes me more efficient on the job what i just need to do is put a key ring in there or something so i can hang it on the the next thing you're going to see with everything else this is brand new so i'm going to bring this into work for the first time on on wednesday uh, when we go back, um, the kids have off Monday and Tuesday, so I'll be home with them. Maybe I'll bring them to work with me on Tuesday, and they can help out in the shop. But this actually, believe it or not, as this is so lame. I'm so excited to have this um, so that I can carry it around, and it can hang on my stuff, and I can, I can just have it right there with me. And then the final piece of the ensemble. Um, so you guys have seen this in, in a way. 
a little while ago. So this can just clip to a belt loop and then this is kind of like my multi tool stuff. Now I don't carry a multi tool and sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, like an actual multi-tool, like a Leatherman or a Gerber or something. But then, but this little clip, I have all sorts of stuff on here. So there's a shop key for the for the main lock. Okay. Um, dealing with the alarm system is not something I like to do, so I try not to be the first one there or the last one out. <laughs> but so we, when we talked about um, blade holders, we looked at this by Mech Army. And this is very similar to a number 11 blade, but it's not quite a number 11 blade. And we looked at different options. And the reason that I carry this one at work is because this is just very comfortable for me on my fingers for when I have to do very fine cuts in hydrographics film or masking material or stencils or whatever. And uh, stressing again, lightweight, portable, it's always on me. Um, I, I know that the, even though the blades are a little expensive and hard to get my hands on for replacements, they are high quality blades and they maintain their edge for a long time. And I can just, it, like I said, it's very comfortable to hold. So I can do a lot of fine work over the long haul. Now, normally I wouldn't even take it off this thing. Um, I just, I'm taking everything off to show you each piece, but it has this um, magnetic connector there. So I can just pull it down, take it off, use it, and then when I'm done, it goes right back on. This is a locking Night Eyes S-clip that it's connected to, um, just so I could connect it, because this little this little ring here wouldn't fit, and I suppose I could've just gotten a bigger ring, but, you know, oh well. Um, so, makes it very easy to remove it when I need to use it, and then just snap it back in place. And it's a strong magnet, it does not, you have to really forcefully uh, remove it. It doesn't, it doesn't come off yeah, you gotta like, you gotta wanna pull it off. So there's that. Um, this uh, Rovivon over here, Aurora A1, as a, I replaced, I replaced an Olight. And you know, I love my Olights, but this guy is very bright um, for when I inevitably drop something on the concrete floor and need to find it, or I'm looking in a cabinet for something. Um, this came from uh, EDC gear. I think, yeah, the EDC box, um, the EDC club. Going gear, EDC club, there we go. And it just, it's a very bright light. I mean, it's, it's a very nice, very, very good light, very lightweight, lighter than the little O-lights I used to have on there. It also is on a little magnetic connection so I can take it off and use it as I need to, and then just whoop, let it go right back on. Um, and this doesn't have a key ring, so this just goes right back onto the clip. And this also will go back onto the clip. And then finally, very personalized to me, um, it's just a simple little, you guys saw this long ago messing with the laser. This is a UST little vial that I keep some, well, I probably need to replace these at this point. Migraine medication and in case that son of a bitch PTSD thing happens, you know, and I run into a little triggering stimuli, whatever. Got some medication for that, just emergency rescue stuff. Um, like, you know, in case of some kind of extreme anxiety type whatever, I'm pretty open and honest with you guys about all that stuff. I have that right here, so that that stays with me at all times. And I have this at the shop. And that is basically my loadout all day, every day. Now again, I might choose to amplify it up with uh, uh, another knife. I like to I like to bring the axial shift, the axial shift with me just to play with in the shop because we can. Um, notice there's no firearms included here. I'm not even going to touch that with YouTube being the way it is these days. But hey, Patriot Armory and Coatings is a firearms heavy business, and people involved in the operation of the shop do more often than not have something on their hip for security purposes. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, uh, but so, so, you know, often I'll have a multi-tool with me. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll add something else. Uh, this is like the basic. This is my, when I say everyday carry, this will be on me every day, all the time. Um, other things may come and go, but this is my everyday. Oh, and then of course also my, um, my uh, G-Shock. Um, this is the, 
It's actually a solar powered and this solar battery has been awesome since 2015. It is, it, it, you can charge it up once and it runs all month, you know? And it's got the radio, satellite, whatever, um, atomic clock time, so it's always accurate. I've got my Fitbit always going, so I always know that I'm sort of, that I need to be in better shape. And um, because there's so much stuff running on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in the shop, I still use corded Bose headphones to listen to music just to reduce the risk of interference or Bluetooth connecting to this or that. I keep my Bluetooth off on the phone in the shop because um, there's a lot of different machines and things that connect through Bluetooth and, and all this other stuff. So yeah, I still have I, I still have my plain old um, Bose uh wired earbuds here so they're usually with me they're usually in my pocket so that i can listen to some music and and that's about it so this is this is the doc edc the doc p edc as of right now um what do you guys think what do you uh, what do you particularly like in this little setup or what do you not like what do you like that's something i would never carry i would never deal with that um, or what do you like? Is, is there anything here that's surprising to somebody that you're really just like, wow, that's interesting. I never thought of that. Or, wow, that would never occur to me. Or is or is some of this stuff just like, do you think like I would never want that weight in my pocket? I don't know. Interesting to hear what you guys carry as your EDC. Let me know. So I hope this answers the question that was asked. Um, and I hope you guys made it through this video without falling asleep. So. Always happy to do these viewer requests, and I hope that this was interesting. Shout out to my Patreon guys, as always. Stuff in this video was not related to Patreon um, support and fundage, but you guys, like I say, you never have any idea how much of what goes on really is. So thank you to those guys, and thank you to all of you keeping this channel going and giving it the staying power it's had somehow by the grace of God and the viewers. So you guys are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.